Proud to sign to thin. Yeah. I, I, I don't envy the right, big little summit tomorrow. The YouTube channel, the Lenaro on air YouTube channel. Tell me. I was watching the good, the bad, and the ugly. Yeah. So I've got. You know what? I was thinking about doing some sort of montage to open up the mini summit with the good, bad, and the ugly. Yeah. Well, that's the Android, the, the Android, uh, the Texas uh, Android Festival, which has just happened. They've got the cowboy hat, Email. Android. That's a different name. Hey, Axel. How's it going? <laughs> well, thanks for making it. Yeah, that's okay. We can chat. We can chat later. There's so much time today. What do you think, David? Well, we'll give it give it another few minutes. We got uh, it's. I make it thirty two. So all right. No, you make it thirty two, thirty three. And then we should just start. And those that are late can I be embarrassed. That's right. So you can apply magic software to my Nexus 7 and it'll still work properly afterwards. Yes. Good. I'll bring it to you, bring it to the hallowed grounds. And <laughs> <laughs> if you make it work fast is good. If you stop it working bad. <laughs> I think we'll get an 8 out of 10 at this point. But then you can go back, so. I think you lose some settings, but that's all right. No, you can reset those settings. That's some interesting acoustics. You can hear the door opening and closing back here. Yeah. Hey, David Zimmerman. <laughs> so Kira was more or less last yesterday, so hopefully he's not more or less last today. <laughs> You can hear me? Do I need the mic? Nope. <laughs> oh, are you listening to me on Google on Google Hangouts and it's working? Yeah. Oh good. A ten second delay? Oh that wouldn't fly at Polycom, man. They have a hundred milliseconds at HDMI. I can tell myself jokes. <laughs> so uh, let, let's get going rather than wait for all those tardy people who are still having breakfast. Um, so a couple of notes is this today is the other way up, i.e. it's hacking in the morning and sessions in the afternoon. But we didn't move the plenaries, uh, just so you have to get out of bed and come here. Um, so we've got a couple of plenaries today ar around the mini summit that uh, Zach and the guys are holding this afternoon, the Android mini summit. So Zach will do a quick introduction and then um, we get an interesting talk from Christian. Um, and notice, Thomas. And Thomas. Oh, right. Yeah. Oh, sorry. I, I find things out last. <laughs> this, is, this is flat Stanley. I don't know what it means, but this is flat Stanley. Um, 
the hacking sessions tonight. So this is a bit of a try something new. Um, there's a couple of the hacking rooms will be open tonight, and there'll be um, local food delicacies and nibbles and beer involved. And uh, you can you know stay up late and hack, and do what you do. Um, other than that, I think that's that's it. Go, Zach. Thanks, David. Good morgan, or good morn. I've been practicing. How's everybody this lovely morning? It's good morning. So, as David said, this is an upside down day, so we're going to have Christian Bejer I, 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 <laughs> but Ram, who's a fellow at STE and TS, new TSC representative from STE, give a chat about um, STE's Android uh, efforts and challenges and successes. And Thomas Longley, who's VP of Engineering at FXI, uh, give a talk about how FXI has actually used uh, Lenaro's output to enable their cotton candy product. So, that's going to be pretty fun. So, of course, getting ahead of myself, I have to, I'm going to chat for five minutes, and then those guys are going to chat for <laughs> uh, 10 and 15 minutes accordingly. So, today's mini summit, which will be happening this afternoon, is kind of a uh, appetizer for the next two days of Android sessions. And the hope is that we can generate a lot of discussion and take some action items and then expand on those action items as the day, as the next two days uh, unfold. So the next two day sessions may hopefully be impacted by the mini summit and so if you've got questions or you've got issues or you've got ideas, then please shout them out and we can actually follow them up in the sessions. That's what the entire, that's how this thing has been designed. So we're roughly broken into, the Android Mini Summit will be roughly broken into two themes. The first theme is optimization. So Android is moving into this new world where it's not just an ARM thing. I mean, it never was, but ARM was the only hardware that was that could run Android at a sufficiently bad at, at with sufficient battery life to make it a to make practical products. But now, because I don't know, there's 500 million Android devices, and other people want a part of that market x86 and MIPS and a whole variety of other architectures are also coming into the game and Android had prepared for that and designs their system to be largely architecture agnostic. But fortunately there's Lenaro and Lenaro is in a very very good place to make sure that Android continues to run the best on ARM platforms as ARM introduces new architectural features and as ARM's partners main, make those features a reality in silicon. So I'm excited because we have the potential to have a very big impact on a very, very big market and do things even like, you know, save a power plant worth of power by making the right design decisions. So the, the things that we do and the, the changes that we make and the things that we get upstream will have a big material impact on the entire world because of the popularity of the Android platform. And so we can have, we can have, uh, we can cause big changes, which is great. As part of that optimization, uh, part of the optimization uh, part of the mini summit. Vishal is going to talk about Android benchmarking and optimization opportunities. So Vishal has really taken the lead on benchmarking, taking benchmarks that ARM had originally uh, created out in their Bangalore office and integrating those benchmarks into automation and 
main, making sure that those benchmarks can run across all of our platforms for every build that we do. And he's going to talk about the results of those and solicit some ideas for new, uh, new benchmarking uh, opportunities and then how do we need to use that benchmarking data and how can we improve that benchmarking data. Michael Hope is going to ask, ask for ideas and we're going to have a discussion on Dalvik and V8 JIT improvements. So the way that Android has essentially created a architecture agnostic platform is by making heavy use of Dalvik and the Android framework on which Dalvik sits. So a lot of code runs in Dalvik and it's important that Dalvik take advantage of the latest ARM architectural improvements because it is such a heavily used code path. So we'll be talking about that. And then Nico is going to give a quick kind of overview of Big Little and we'll have a discussion about how Big Little might be applied to Android. If we can save a power plant, this is where it's going to be. Big Little is, fun, is a fundamental change uh, and is a super important change to be able to get to what David Russling always asked for, which is 10 hour battery life. And with Big Little we can get there. Then we're going to kind of look at, we're going to shift, we're going to shift gears a bit and we're going to talk about Android in the upstream and productization. Which I'm hoping that by the end of the session, if everybody's not too like fidgety, we'll have a good discussion about how upstreaming and productization can be brought closer together. Jesse Barker is going to lead off that discussion with a uh, talk about graphics and some of the work that Jesse's done and hopes to do for um, graphic optimization and graphic uh, and upstreaming graphic uh, graphic uh, patches. Deepak is then going to kind of give the Android kernel up upstreaming update, which should be super interesting because that information is, I think, only available here. So not because it's not anywhere out there, but it's just so distributed that it kind of really reflects Lenaro's core billet, which is ensuring that uh, Linux on ARM and Android on ARM really, you know, uh, um, ensuring that uh, the things that we do get into the upstream and get into the users of Linux on ARM. So that'll be good. And then we're going to have a, a remote uh, participant, Kareem. Kareem, I'm not sure if people know, but he's uh, an O'Reilly author and he's been working on a, a new O'Reilly title called Embedded Android. And he's going to talk to us and solicit ideas and talk to us about issues that he's seen. Um, Embedded Android you can read as Headless Android. And Headless Android is this idea that Android is such a useful system because most of the SOC manufacturers are focusing on it exclusively because that's where the market is. And so other device vendors like set-top box, set box manufacturers, it, more traditional uh, headless embedded Android or embedded systems uh, developers want to use it uh, because it's it just fits, right? And it drops in and you can use it right away. So he's going to talk about that. And then we're going to have a couple of SDE Android engineers talk about Android productization challenges at ST Ericsson. So this will kind of segue into the productization part of the part of the session. And then we're going to talk about uh, finish off with upstream to productization and productization to upstream, which I'm hoping is a discussion along the lines of you can have your cake and eat it too. So, and then we'll finish up with questions and action item reviews. Uh, for the whole for the whole session and make sure we have everything noted down and and uh, ready to go So without further ado, I will introduce uh, I'd like to introduce Christian who's going to talk to us about an STE's Android effort Thanks Christian.
Okay. So, hi everyone. Uh, my name is Christian Baum. I work at ST Ericsson with anything, everything Linux and Android, software architect. And so, I, I will present or try to explain or, or briefly tell you what we do with Android. And I will also tell a, a little bit about how we work in order to be efficient and follow the, the next generation of Linux and Android. So, at ST Ericsson, we design and develop complete platforms. So we do everything from hardware to software and validate everything in one piece together. We do a power and performance optimized fully integrated solution using Android today. And on top of that, we run all the Android conformance test cases, include the, the Google managed services, the Google applications, run the test suites for the Google applications do performance optimization, stability optimizations and improvement across the entire system. And to do this, we build complete form factor reference designs, including application processor, integrated modem, RF connectivity, including sensors in order to develop the software and integrate the sensors into Android, including camera and display to have the best performance and optimized camera and display pipelines in Android, including a fully certified connectivity solution with GPS, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, USB, everything. And of course, the modem, modem integrated, modem pre-certified certifi certified, and also tier one operator accepted, so to say. And to our customers, we also deliver tools for them to be able to work with with the platform on, our, on their side. So flash tools, debug and trace tools, image tuning tools, auto calibration tools, etc. On the software side, one easy way to see it is that we, we, do, we do the full platform, so we develop all the software needed in order to enable all the hardware and get the best integration and the best performance, best power, power efficient solution. And to today we, we see there is this huge need of, of power optimizations as well. Battery lifetime is, is not very long on Android devices, so that's a key area we work on. With the new ARM CPUs, etc., the thermal issues and the packaging, so it becomes a big problem, so we work a lot on that as well. Uh, on top of these core software hardware, hardware enablement software, we, we also bring a full multimedia solution with optimized display and graphics pipeline, hardware accelerated codecs, uh, etc. And on top of all this, we also do optimizations of key Android use cases. And some of these use cases are, are the web browser use cases where we spend a lot of time optimizing for the best user experience. We also pre-integrate key third-party applications and key third-party software components for certain use cases, such as secure content playback use case, etc. And now I will list a couple of areas or, or components that we have done performance optimizations in. And as you see, they, they match pretty well with, with the proposed optimizations that will be done in Lenovo later on. And it seems, so they seem to be the, the, the right things, right areas to focus on, so to say. So we, we have been working on, early on, we have been working on doing neon optimizations and ARM assembly opt optimizations in Bionic for memcopy, memcompare, memset, etc. We have been working on the Dolvik virtual machine as a SACSA, which is the key execution engine on Android, to do the JIT optimizations in, in the code generator, etc. We focus a lot on power management of the whole system, so including Android as well. And we also do general software improvements in, in drivers. We, we integrate VP8, WebAM, do modifications in CPU frack if needed bring our own governors if needed, etc. On top of all these performance optimizations, we, we also bring in a couple of feature additions. So before they are available in, in Android open source or in Android by default, we also develop some certain features that our customers request. A couple of examples are full FM radio solution, including the Android APIs, including CTS test cases, etc. Bluetooth profiles, Wi-Fi features such as Wi-Fi Direct, Wi-Fi Display, etc. 
uh, and what's what should be noticed noted as well is that we we always try to work in the open and work with contributions and contribute these code changes to the different communities out there. So we, we work with Android Open Source Project, we work with individual communities such as Blue Set community and, and we work with kernel.org community to, to contribute to the changes we do in the kernel, etc. A couple of um, performance optimizations in the web browser use case. So we have been working on trying to get the best user experience when, when consumers browse the web on our platforms. And to do that, we have done hardware acceleration on the HTML5 canvas using the GPU to, to hardware accelerate 2D graphics. We, we work a lot on the V8 JavaScript engine in order to improve the performance of that. It's a key execution engine for, for web-based apps. We've been doing a neon optimization in the ski blitters, for instance. Also, been working a little bit on the JPEG library in the decode, software decode of JPEG images to do neon optimizations and so on. And also in the, the web browser use case or the web browser, we, we, we have been working a little bit on, on adding new features. And one of those features are WebJ, WebGL, so 3D graphics in the, in the browser using OpenGL. So these are just a, a brief overview of, of software development that we do on our side. Uh, we'll also talk a little bit about that the, the world change. Consumers ask for the latest version of Android and, and the kernel changes. It's a constant change of software out there. And today we don't own the software ourselves. We, we, we work with the communities and we, there are other people working with the same software as us. So it's very important to be, be able to work with these communities. We work with external parties. And, and be able to, f in, in a very high speed, work with multiple products, multiple customers, multiple versions of Android, multiple versions of the kernel, etc. at the same time. So I will list a couple of tips or things that we, that we, um, we do on our side in order to succeed with this. So at, at SD Ericsson, we have a clear strategy to align and work with the communities. So we work with contributions. We, we work with the, the communities. We release early and often. We, we, we work with contiguous refactoring our, of our software solutions. We, we, try, we try to follow the evolution of Android. So if Android changed the multimedia framework, or if Android changed some other major frameworks, we follow that instead of trying to patch the things together with, with legacy software. We adapt the internal way of working to use community tools, community way of working, and, that, that has, and, and use the community infrastructure, so to say. And that has been a long journey. It is not, it's not always easy to, to change and, and, and work with, with new way of workings and new tools, so to say. We have clear processes and guidelines on how to work with software. We have the infrastructure and tool support to, to, to help our developers. Um, measure and track and have, have KPIs on, on how good we are at, at uh, when we develop changes in Android, do patches so that we don't end up with a huge patch set on top of Android that, that later on would be very difficult to move to the next Android and so on. And, and every time we do code reviews, patch reviews, we always have upstream in mind. So the goal of the, of the code is to get it out. And, and, and you, you have some constraints on how, how you develop your code if you want to contribute it. And we also try to develop and maintain a strong open source awareness in the organization. It's, it's important that the developers and engineers is aware of open source. It's also important that the managers are aware of open source and the way of working with open source. So let's see if this, yeah. So, just to end, I've, list, I've listed a couple of things that we do that we think benefit uh, and, and make us more aggressive and, and, and able to, to do faster kernel upgrades, faster Android upgrades, and work with multiple Androids in parallel. So we try to be as close as possible to Google, which is not always easy. We try to be a valuable partner to Google. As everyone knows here, I mean, Android is open source, but it's heavily 
developed by Google, of course, and, and it gets released every six months or so. Uh, information and knowledge is, is key. So we try to, to get as much information as possible and also make sure that everyone is aware of the changes that, that are coming, so to say. So we can prepare, we can anticipate and plan for, for the things to come as early as possible. Uh, we try to do kernel alignment, and, and that's a big part of the, the Lenovo work as well. Make sure that the, there's only one, one way of doing things for, for ARM socks, so to say. So that makes, makes, much, makes it much easier to contribute the code later on. Uh, we also try to be a very good community member and, and do the contributions, contributions on our own side, as well as working in Lenovo, with Lenovo, to do contributions through Lenovo as well. And within Lenovo and with Lenovo, we also try to take as much benefit as possible of all the things coming out of Lenovo. The unified memory manager, the uh, power management improvements, the kernel alignment work, soon the Android open optimizations, the tool chain, etc. We aim to use as, as much as possible and, and help the industry and, and, and uh, the Lenovo to be, to be a success. So, yeah, that was a quick overview of, of what we do. There are, there, are, there are tough audience first thing in the morning, but thank yeah. you for listening. So in this room, I believe we've got what we're calling a village meeting. So we had a town meeting the other day, which is kind of everyone at Lenaro. The village meeting is for those who are employed by Lenaro, because it's about that sort of thing, and that's in here. Um, everyone else, you know, there's hacking in the various hacking rooms. And don't forget, having had the intro to the Android mini summit, it's still got Thomas. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just go back to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> so here's, here's the thing. Don't stay in the bar till midnight. Yes, 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 yes. Well, thanks, Christian. I think um, one point from your, your talk that uh, really kind of rung true with me and I think illustrates illustrates kind of the kind of the new world we live in is that the marketplace has chosen community-based software development. Nobody's forcing the market to use community-based software development. And because of that, it's very important to work as efficiently with the community and work across community and proprietary interests as, as we can to really execute quickly in this, in this new world we live in. So it's that, you know, from our workings with SDE, STE's engagement with Lenaro and Lenaro's engagement with STE has really helped you guys work with the community easier and then, of course, interact with the community um, in a more effect effective and efficient manner. So um, on the other end of the community spectrum are the people that actually build the products. So I'd like to introduce Thomas. And Thomas came to us a bit ago and said, hey, you guys have this cool uh, origin build, and I think it could really help us uh, ramp up and, and improve our software uh, development efficiencies. And so Thomas's uh, company, FXI Technologies, has created this uh, great cotton candy HDMI stick, new market segment completely, and uh, I'll let him talk to you about it for a few minutes. Thanks, Thomas. Not too many minutes. There's no output on the. Oh, <laughs> there's no output on the slide. There we go. There you go. Sorry about that. It's okay. Okay, so. My name is Thomas Langes, and I'm from a company called FXI Technologies. And we have created this small computer called, which we call Cotton Candy. And FXI Technologies spun out from Phalanx Microsystems back in 2006 when ARM acquired Phalanx Microsystems. Phalanx was the creator of the Mali GPU, as some of you might know. Uh, and it all started with something different. We wanted to do graphics processing on the micro SD card. 
and we were actually able to have the prototype, but building the chip was expensive. So we thought, what can we do with commodity components? And that's when we created the cotton candy. We found the Exynos, which had components we knew well because it had the MAL GPU and the ARM CPUs. And in August last year. So <coughs> we, what we started with was the, the, the Samsung BSPs. And a few months later, we got the, the Linar, we found Linara, the Linara community. And the, then we discovered the, the, Unix, the, the Linux um, Ubuntu build by Linara, because we already had Gingerbread running on the device, and we wanted a Linux version as well. So we started looking at what Linara could give us. I started talking to Zach and Alexandra and a few others and discovered that we could start shift our focus towards both userland and kernel in, instead of just focusing on instead of focusing on the whole package we could shift our focus to just focus on the kernel side because most of the userland was ready and it was already tested on a similar device the origin board uh, that since we are a small company that saved a lot of resources for us and Later on, we could also uh, look at the, the ICS release from Linara and just integrate that into our system. Uh, and today, we are still doing kernel development and some user space development because some parts aren't available through Linara because they're closed source or binary releases from Linara. This is due to licensing agreements, I guess. Uh, and one of the things we have acquired a license on, and I believe we are the only non-SOC company with a such license, is the Mali GPU. We have a software license on the Mali GPU uh, drivers. And this has enabled us to build Mali drivers for Ubuntu Linux. And a few weeks ago, we actually released the first uh, Mali, Mali GPU Ubuntu uh, Linux driver as part of our Ubuntu release. And we have also uh, re released our efforts into the open source community so that others can build the images we build. Uh, right now, not everything is released as open source. Some parts are still binary, so you need to take them out of our binary images. But down the road, we will open source as much as we are allowed to due to licensing agreements. And we also hope that we can <laughs> upstream parts to Linaro, and then that they can upstream it back into the, the community. And our goal is to be a developer-friendly company and develop, make developer-friendly devices, even though we also focus on the business side and doing business-to-business -business deals. And we see that this is not a one-way street. You can't do, you don't have to just do the one thing and not do the other, you can do both but just have to know, know what you're, where you're putting your feet to not violate any agreement. And not everything can be open source. And some people have an issue with that, but most people understand that you can't open source everything, but you can still contribute back to the open source community. And I think that's the key part. Right. Yeah. Yes, yes, we're really good. Yeah. Yeah. Nice, Thomas. Yeah, yeah. Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, I've already said everything I'm going to say now, so I'm not going to say anything. So have a, a lovely rest of the day, and um, see you all about later. Thanks.